Good morning. Welcome to all who have gathered here in our Lord's house around his word and sacrament to worship and praise him on this fourth Sunday in Advent. And of course, just a couple more days till Christmas. Right? And as we finalize our preparations, what are we really getting ready for? A birthday? A baby in a manger? Well, those are all the things we usually think about when we think of Christmas. But we're really getting ready for so much more than that. Because the one who's coming is so much more than just a little baby. He's our king. In fact, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. That's why today the focus of our worship is to get ready for our coming king. We're going to focus on just that as we follow the order of service printed out for you in the worship folder. And we begin this morning with the singing of hymn 28. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. The congregation may kneel if they so desire. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7, where we hear God's promise to King David that a king, an eternal king, would come from David's line. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies." The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. 
He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson is taken from Romans chapter 16. There the Apostle Paul writes, Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Here ends our second lesson. Alleluia. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Alleluia. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel will serve as our sermon text for this morning. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 9. Glory be to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the next hymn. Please note that that hymn is printed out for you on the the green insert in your worship folder.
and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We listen to our God this morning as he speaks to us through his angel Gabriel. As we hear these words of Gabriel recorded for us in Luke chapter 1, the words he spoke to Mary. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are looking forward longingly not only to celebrate our Lord's birthday, but to celebrate his return. You ever watch a magician? You ever get to see a magician do a magic trick up close? And maybe you were watching the magician's hands, watching oh so closely, right? You were going to figure it out. You were going to figure out exactly how that trick was done, and yet you couldn't, right? No, No matter how closely you watched, you just weren't able to figure out the trick. But you know it was a trick. You know it was just some sleight of hand, and yet what the magician did seemed impossible. Well, that's because the magician got you to look in the wrong place. You see, that's how how they do that. The, The magician gets you looking at some particular place or thing, and while you're looking at that, then they do the trick. The trick is actually happening somewhere else. You're you're focused on the wrong thing and you end up missing what's happening. As we hear this message that God spoke through his angel Gabriel, our Heavenly Father doesn't want us to get distracted with the wrong thing. He, He doesn't want us to get distracted with something that's just happening on the surface. Now, God wants us to look and listen closely to his word here this morning so that we can be amazed. So that we can be amazed at what's really taking place behind the scenes. So be amazed. Be amazed at the Lord's coming. Be amazed at who he is. And be amazed at why he came. Now, the angel Gabriel spoke some pretty amazing words to Mary. I mean, this, this is just an incredible message when you, when you think about what he's saying here. Gabriel tells Mary, You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. That is is an incredible message. This is a spectacular message. And yet Mary kind of gets hung up on the first couple of words. She seems to be thinking about the the physical aspect of the very first thing Gabriel said to her, you will be with child. And Mary's going, wait a minute. And what does she say? How will this be? Right, since I am a virgin. And rightly so. Because you see, according to Jewish law at that time, when a couple was engaged to be married... Right? When they made that commitment to each other, at that point, they were legally married. But they did not come together as husband and wife until the actual day of the wedding. Well, the wedding hadn't taken place yet. Mary knows that, so she knows I, I can't be pregnant because Joseph and I have not been together yet as husband and wife. And she seems to be stuck on that thought. She ends up missing, though, who this child is, is going to be. Right? So to help Mary get, get past what she's focused on, Gabriel, in essence, pulls back the curtain. And he helps her to understand what's really happening here, what's going on behind the scenes. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. God himself would be this child's father. That means this child would be holy, sinless. And Gabriel's words, in his words, he ends up repeating what he said earlier. This is God's son. The child would be the world's savior. And he would also be Mary's savior. And Mary, in grasping all this, responds to this good news humbly, gratefully. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. She understands now. She understands who this child is. And Mary is just, she's amazed, not only at her Lord's coming, but at how he chose to come. And in her amazement, she gives thanks. She thanks the Lord for his coming by humbly submitting herself to God's will. You know, we have also been given an amazing message. A message that that we get to hear every year, right? Jesus, the Savior, is born. He was born into this world to free the world from sin and, and to reunite people with God. This message we get to hear repeated every year, right? A message of God sending his son to rescue us from sin and hell. I mean, it's a message of peace and joy. It's the message we get to hear every year as we prepare for our Lord's coming. And yet as we prepare for Christmas, just like Mary we can get a little distracted, right? We can start to focus on the wrong things. We tend to focus on all those outward things that are connected with celebrating Jesus' birthday, don't we? Oh, maybe this year not so much as in years past just because COVID has kind of put a damper on some of that and yet we still get caught up in in all the preparations, right? You got to clean the house, the cleaning, the decorating, the, the baking, filling out the Christmas cards, right? Make sure you didn't miss anybody. And of course, the buying and wrapping of presents, right? And the list just goes on and on. And as we work through this list in that that rush to get everything ready, it's very easy for us to get stuck on those surface things. You see, as our preparations for Christmas become more and more important, God's gift to us at Christmas tends to become less and less important. Oh, sure, we have all those slogans that we've come up with over the years to help remind us of what's important, right? Jesus is the reason for the season, right? Keep Christ in Christmas. But do we? Where where is Christ in our Christmas preparations? Is, Is he in that manger scene under the Christmas tree? Is is that where Jesus is? Is Jesus on the cover of the Christmas cards that we send out? Or or maybe he's on that Advent calendar counting down the days to his birthday? Is that the only place we see our Lord during Advent? We may see Jesus in our outward preparations for Christmas, but where do we see Jesus in our inward preparations for Christmas? Is is he in our hearts? Is he on our minds as we get ready for his birthday? Because, you know, year after year, we hear what the Bible says about Christ's birth. And we hear what Gabriel says about this baby. But in our misplaced focus, have we stopped being amazed at this child that God has promised? In 
our mixed up thinking, do we allow this extraordinary child to become something so ordinary? Because when we do, we end up despising God's amazing gift as if it's nothing really all that special. And that's why, like Mary, God helps us see how special his gift to us really is. God comes along and he pulls back the curtain for us so that we can see what's going on behind the scenes. Right? Gabriel tells us this child is the Holy One. Right? That means from, from his conception, this baby is something that we have never been. He's perfect. He's sinless. This child is the Son of God. And, you know, that, that might actually be a little hard for us to wrap our heads around. I mean, how, how does something eternal, something with no beginning and no end, become something as limited as a human being? And yet, this is the eternal God taking on human flesh, right? Coming to, to breathe our air, coming to, to walk in our footsteps, this is God himself with whom nothing is impossible. This is Jesus. His name means the Lord saves. Be amazed at that because that's exactly what he came to do. He came to save us. Right? The perfect son of God came to do what we could never do. It was impossible for us because it's impossible for us to live without sin. But from the moment he was born, Jesus never sinned, right? He kept every one of God's laws perfectly for us. And that tiny baby in a wooden manger would one day be the Lamb of God nailed to a wooden cross. And it's there that he paid for our misplaced, misplaced thoughts and preparations. It's there that our Lord shed his blood to remove the guilt of our dishonoring and despising him. Yes, this child came to do amazing things. May Gabriel's words stir up our hearts. May his words cause us to be amazed at who this child is. This child is the Almighty. He's the one who saves us from our sins. But our amazement shouldn't stop with who this child is. Now, what should really amaze us is why he even came in the first place. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, we know why he came in the first place, Pastor. You just told us he came to save us from our sins. Well, sure, that's the result of his coming into this world. But I'm talking about the reason he chose to come into this world in the first place. As we hear again about Christ being born, right? as we listen again to, to the words of the angel and, and not just Gabriel's words, but everything leading up to Jesus' birth. Just like our Christmas preparations, we tend to focus on the outward things. We tend to focus on the obvious things, like, like even in our text here. When we hear Gabriel speaking all these words to Mary, what do we tend to focus on? We tend to focus on the miracles, right? Right? Gabriel mentions Elizabeth, right? She's past the age of having children. But he says that God miraculously allowed her to become pregnant. And even Mary, right? I mean, she became pregnant without a human father, the virgin birth. I mean, a miracle. But more than that, you look at Mary's response 
to, to Gabriel's words. And she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Right? We see in Mary the, the miracle of faith. She simply trusts what God says to her. And in these few verses before us, what do we see? Miracle after miracle after miracle. And you know, to all of these miracles, all, all I can really say at this point is, so what? No, really, like, so what? Big deal. Do you really, do you really think it's all that hard for God to create a couple of babies? We're talking about God here. We are talking about the almighty creator of everything. How, how hard can it be for him to create two babies? Right? He probably didn't even break a sweat. And the miracle of faith? God's been creating faith in people since the time Adam and Eve fell into sin. You know, what... This is nothing new for God. All God has to do is say the word, and, and it's as good as done. Even Gabriel makes that clear when he says, nothing is impossible with God. Oh, sure, miracles, they, they're, they're impressive. But you know what's really amazing here is not the miracles. No, what's really amazing it's the fact that God did any of this at all. This is God. He is eternal. He is holy. He is perfect. He is completely independent of everyone and everything. God doesn't need us. And God certainly doesn't rely on us for anything. It's, everything is God's. Everything in this universe is his. So God doesn't owe us a thing. He certainly doesn't have to give us anything. And you know, for as often as we forget about him, for as often as we despise him, why should God do anything for us? You know what? Our Lord, he didn't have to do this. Our Lord didn't have to do a thing for us. And yet he did. And that's what's really amazing here. You know, the Bible calls this amazing thing that God did for us his grace. God's grace. It's that love that love of God that we didn't deserve, but God shares that love with us anyway. You see, what's amazing is not that a little baby was promised to a virgin. No, what's amazing is that that little baby is God himself who is coming to people who wanted nothing to do with him. Why was he coming? So he could save them. God loves the people of this world so much that he sent his own son to save them. See, Jesus didn't come because we deserve it or because we somehow earned it. No, he simply came because he loves you. Jesus set aside his glory as God and he humbled himself to be born of a virgin. And in that humility, he came to serve and to save his own creation. And he did all that simply because he loves us. He did it because he wants us to be with him forever. God didn't allow all this stuff to happen so he could show off his power. You know, God did all of this to prove his love for you. Boy, how do you, how do you respond to love like that? 
How do we respond to this amazing gift? Have you ever been given a gift like that? Have you ever been given a gift that was just so above and beyond that you thought to yourself, how am I ever going to thank this person enough for this gift? How can we ever thank God enough for for this incredible gift? One way we could do that is to look at Mary's example. She simply said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. We can thank God by serving him. But how do you, how do you serve a God who needs nothing? <laughs> well, first of all, like Mary, we can humbly put ourselves under his authority. Right? And we do that by obeying what he tells us in his word. Right? We let God's word, we let his law and his gospel direct our thoughts and our actions. We, in humble gratitude, say right along with Mary, may it be to me as you have said. And we also can serve our Lord by serving the people he puts in our lives. Right? When, when we use those gifts that he blesses us with to care for the, the physical, mental, and emotional needs of, of our family, of our friends, uh, of our fellow Christians. Right? And we also use God's gift of faith to us right? to help serve the spiritual needs of others. Praying for people, sharing with others that, that good news of the Savior, sharing with our brothers and sisters that good news to keep their faith strong during this time when it's hard to be together with others. And we can serve our Lord by loving and caring others the the way he loves and cares for us. So be amazed. Be amazed at the Lord's coming. Be amazed at, at who he is He is Christ, the Lord. He's the Savior of the world. But also be amazed at why he came. Right? He came because of his tremendous love for you. Your Lord set aside the glories of heaven to take on human flesh and blood. And and having humbled himself to be born of a virgin, your loving Savior lived and died and rose again so that he could give you gifts beyond your imagining. And he does. Be amazed as he gives you those gifts of peace with God and eternal life. Amen. I ask, ask you to please stand. And if you turn to page 7 in your worship folder... There we'll join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Just a reminder that uh, we will not be collecting the offering here in the service, uh, but there are offering boxes on either side of the door uh, if you wish to leave uh, a donation on your way out of church this morning. As we continue with the prayer of the church, uh, we have two prayer requests so far. The first is for David and Liz Cook. Uh, they both have the COVID virus, but uh, they've told me that they are They've turned the corner and they're getting better and they want to have a prayer of thanks to God for helping them uh, get over the virus. But uh, David also asked if we could pray for his mother who has the COVID virus as well and is uh, currently hospitalized because of that. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? All right, if not, let us pray. O gracious Father, we humbly kneel before you in awe and wonder at the gift that you have prepared for us. Through that gift, we ask you to restore our hope, lift our hearts from all the, the outward preparations that we may be making for your son's birthday and lift our hearts and eyes to that place where you're soon, your son will soon return from. As we look forward not only to Jesus' birthday, but to his return again on that last day, we ask you to continue to forgive us for all those times that we have perhaps allowed our thoughts and minds to be misdirected, that we've allowed them to linger on the the things of this world that gleam and glitter. Forgive us for these things, dear Lord, and help us to treasure all the more the gift that you have prepared. And, oh, gracious God, we know that you are the giver of, of life and health. That's why we, we praise you for having granted your servants, Dave and Liz Cook, that continuing recovery from the COVID virus. We pray that you would help them daily remember your goodness as they regain their health and strength. May they look forward to continuing to serve you with lives that reflect genuine thankfulness for all of the blessings that you give us through your Son. And compassionate Father, in your mercy, we know that you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. It's with this confidence that we commit all who are sick or suffering into your tender care. We pray especially for David's mother, Gretchen Cook, who is now suffering with that COVID virus. Provide healing and relief for her according to your wisdom and mercy. Grant her patient endurance if her suffering must linger. Give her the hope of knowing that your son has taken away her sin and that he will soon return to take her and all of us to that place he has prepared. By the work of your spirit, help her and all of us to trust all the more in Jesus' forgiveness, grace, and love. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
Come quickly, dear Lord, and fill our longing eyes with the light of your coming. We wait, we watch, and in you we put our hope. Amen. I ask you to please stand as we continue with the sacrament liturgy on page 8. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who comes with his Father to make his home in human hearts, working repentance and faith by his Spirit until he comes again. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Be at peace. Your sins are all forgiven in Christ. Amen. I ask you to please stand as we continue with the Song of Simeon. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the final hymn.
Well, good morning. Of course, this is the week we've all been preparing for, right? So this coming Thursday evening, our, we'll be having our Christmas Eve service here at church. Uh, even though we maybe don't have something as big as we'd like to do, uh, we are still having some special things as a part of our worship service. So please come and, and join us for that Christmas Eve at 6.30 p.m. And then, of course, Christmas Day uh, at 9.30 uh, on Friday, and a, a really a special theme this year. So Christmas Eve, God's greatest gift, and then Christmas Day, we get to see God's greatest gift unwrapped. So come and check that out. And then, of course, uh, the following Sunday, our worship service on Sunday. Don't forget about that one. It's easy to kind of, you get Christmas, Christmas Day in there, and then it's like, oh yeah, Christmas, it's Sunday, if that's coming Sunday, is going to come up pretty quickly, so... Uh, also, just to point out in the announcements, our New Year's Eve worship this year is over at Good Shepherd. Uh, we take turns having the New Year's Eve service, so this year it's at Good Shepherd at 6.30. Uh, if you wish to join them, hopefully you can join them over there for New Year's Eve service. And finally, the offering envelopes for 2021. Yeah, that, it's almost a new year already. They're in the back on our... Our treat table back there, if you get the chance, please stop and pick yours up. Uh, saves us the postage of having to mail out the ones that are left over. So if you can, stop and pick up your offering envelopes. Well, please uh, take some time to greet your brothers and sisters in Christ as you head out this morning. And may the Lord bless your week. <laughs>